So you get to a gig and you're totally warming up and not drinking your one free beverage because you're a professional. You look over to your awesome rig that your bandmates carry down the stage and you totally help them. You notice right behind the sound guy's beer gut, he's placing a kick drum mic in front of your bass amp. But it belongs to the drums, right? It's in the name, a kick drum mic or a bass drum mic. Get that away from my awesome bass amp before I take my one free beverage and throw it in your face. Or should I? So you ever thought about why audio engineers might pick a kick drum mic when it comes to recording a bass amp? Of course you did. I was wondering too, so I asked these mic companies that exact question. Why would someone recommend to use a kick drum mic when recording a bass amp? What about this mic is different than other mics that it would make it better for bass? Before I read what they have to say, let's actually hear what a kick drum mic sounds like in front of a bass amp, and let's compare that to an instrument mic that's made for guitars. For the kick drum mic, I'm gonna be using an AKG D112 Mark II. This is my microphone. They're not paying me. They're not sponsoring this video. I bought this mic with my own money. And for the instrument mic, I'm gonna be using a Sennheiser E906. This is my favorite guitar amp mic. Uh, I love the form factor, and I have a video on just this mic with a bass amp, so what this mic sounds like when you're using it for bass guitar, so check that video out too. This mic is actually very comparable to a Shure SM57, so if you've got a Shure SM57, which I guarantee if you look around you right now, you're probably going to see an SM57 somewhere, you can probably think of this mic as the same.
So what do you think? Do you hear any real difference? I did my best to place the mics as close to each other as possible, and I tried to align the mics where the diaphragm would be. I just did my best to aim. Now, to my surprise, I actually liked how both microphones sounded. I thought that I would have one clear winner. I thought I definitely would hear what this mic has to offer, the kick drum mic, and I'd be like, absolutely, this mic is made for bass. I'd take this and toss it out the window, but I did not do that. I listened to every single recording like you guys should have, and I was pleasantly surprised. I liked both the mics, some for some recordings, some for another. But I definitely think that each mic has great qualities, at least when it comes to just your ears. So let's see what the experts have to say. We're gonna start with the answer from the company Sure, and it starts, Dear one of the greatest YouTubers of all time, Thank you for your question, it was brilliant. The reason that kick drum mics may also be recommended for bass cabinets is likely more due to the frequency response of the microphone as opposed to being able to handle higher SPL. Now, SPL stands for sound pressure level, and I wanted to know if the simple reason that kick drum mics would be better is that they could just handle more SPL. They go on to say frequency response of the microphone is essentially how accurately the mic reproduces sounds across the range of sonic frequencies it is sensitive to. At any given frequency, the mic may slightly boost or cut or stay flat, which determines how much the microphone colors the sound or allows it to remain true to the original sound. For example, a vocal mic might have a frequency range of 50 hertz to 15,000 hertz, but in between those points, the mic slightly boosts frequencies around 2,000 to 800 hertz, which specifically is to enhance most important range for human voice. Translate this to the kick drum or bass cabinet and you see a drastically different frequency response that is tuned in the capsule and mic design to enhance not only the low end of the instrument or speaker, but also to enhance in a different way the upper mid frequencies to enhance the attack of the note or kick drum hit. This is so that you not only get the umph of the drum, which is a technical term, but also the initial attack of the note or hit to help define it a bit better for your ears in a mix. Now, of course, they're referring to a kick drum here, but you can also think of this as the attack of the bass note when you kind of dig right into it with your fingers and you can hear that clackety clack, also a technical term. And then they provide some frequency charts. So this is the vocal mic, the SM58, a microphone that every single person has heard of. You will see in the frequency response that it is actually boosted in the area that they said that it's boosted. If you look at the frequency response for their kick drum mic, you can see that it is deliberately tuned down at the lower frequencies. And then what it's saying that is when you move closer to the source, this is what the response is going to look like. So this is at different areas. Uh, physically in front of your source, which would be your kick drum or your bass amp. You can see that the far typical response is at about two feet away, two feet away from the source. So that's actually kind of far. And you can see that as it gets closer and closer to your source, it's going to get even more and more overpowering in those lower frequencies. Now let's see what Sennheiser has to say. Good day, Akash. Thank you for that question. You are awesome. There are a number of factors at play. Most microphones used for kick drums are large diaphragm dynamic microphones with a frequency response going to 20 hertz or lower with attenuation in the frequencies you are looking to reproduce. Now this surely agrees with what Sure just said. This means that the mics can be placed close to the source and get a good level without peaking. And if you go onto their provided link and you look at their kick drum mic, you can see right in the frequency response that they actually dip down the lower frequencies, they attenuate it. So they are not lying. AKG still has yet to respond, but we're gonna assume that they would have said something along the same lines as the other two companies. So mics can be tuned differently, and this makes sense because if every mic was built the same and tuned the same and all the circuitry was the same, then why would you buy different mics? I mean, you would just buy one mic and use it for everything. But what does it mean to be tuned differently? I mean, what in the microphone, can I, I don't see any tuning pegs on here. I don't, I, there's, I mean, can I just sing into it? If it's an A, is the mic gonna turn into an A? In the circuit, you idiot. In the case of a kick drum mic, it's meant to be placed in front of, and I'm talking about right next to, almost touching some very bass heavy source equipment. And that's gonna be something like a kick drum mic or a bass amp. And this is gonna provide a lot of overpowering low frequencies that if the mic is tuned and boosted, it's just gonna to be too much. You're gonna to wanna to get rid of that. It's gonna be way too rumbly. So because of the proximity effect, I'm gonna put the definition of that up, but because of the proximity effect, you wanna actually get rid of those frequencies or 
you want to lower those frequencies on here because you're expecting a lot of those frequencies, an abundance of them to be at the source. Some mics actually turn up the frequencies that it's trying to accentuate. So it'll actually boost the frequencies in the range that the mic is meant to replicate. Let's look at the frequency chart for the Sennheiser E906. You'll see that there's actually boosting right around the frequency range that guitar or mid-range instruments would benefit from. And the same can go for microphones made for vocals. They could deliberately boost and accentuate frequencies that are meant for human voice. So to keep it as simple as possible, the proximity effect is generally gonna be responsible for if you're going to want to boost frequencies that you wanna reproduce, or if you're gonna to wanna to attenuate those frequencies. But the point is, mics are tuned differently from inside the circuit in frequency response in order to give different characteristics, along with other things like the shape and what it's made out of and things like that. And it might even have different features like a switch over here where I can get frequency roll off and it gives the mic a different characteristic that you might choose. So if I'm a bass player and I wanna record my bass amp, I should use a kick drum mic, right? I mean, that's what the professionals do. And I mean, it's right in the name. And I think that we looked at the frequency response charts and all that kind of stuff. And it really looks like that's what I should be doing, right? Well, that depends. Do you see yourself gaining any tangible benefit from what this mic is geared towards doing? If you're not recording or you're not dealing with the live situation, so you're not at the mixing board trying to mix people in, um, you might not really care for what this mic has to offer. And any microphone uh, like this Sennheiser E906 will be more than adequate and you might actually prefer the sound of this microphone. So what gives? Why would someone choose this mic or why do people recommend to have this mic? I mean, lots of mics can sound good in front of bass amps, so then why would somebody deliberately choose this one? Well, if you're an audio engineer, both in the live setting or in the studio recording setting, you might benefit from the fact that this mic is not susceptible to all those overpowering low frequencies. If you were live, and you're mixing a whole band, a mic like this, when it's suited for the frequencies that it's gonna be in front of, might make it a lot easier for you to mix and adjust for the rest of the band. Same thing when you're recording. Having something like this in front of the bass is going to make it sound a lot better in the mix and make it a little bit easier for you because you might not have to EQ or roll off the bass like you were going to anyway. You might just like the way that this sounds com when it compared to all the other mics. For me, I think that when it's in front of a clean bass tone, it really does a good job at reproducing the right amount of frequencies so it feels like a bass guitar. <laughs> Whereas when I have the Sennheiser in front of it, I think the mid range is accentuated just like we saw in the frequency chart. And that really provides some really, really awesome accentuation for mid range heavy distortion, like the grit sound. So I think for the distortion stuff, I really, really do like what this E906 does before when it sounds like a bass guitar and has to sound like one, I think that this kick drum mic does a good job. So I would actually pick this.
but there are no hard and fast rules. And if you're not using a kick drum mic, there's nothing wrong. Your songs or mixes aren't gonna sound bad or off or anything. It's just that this mic might make your job a little bit easier than maybe this mic does. And if you have access to a mic like this, you might wanna give one a shot and see how it sounds on your rig to your ears. But at least for now, it should answer the question of why are kick drum mics often chosen for recording or going live in front of a bass amp. So what do you guys think? Which one do you like better? Do you even hear a difference? Do you care? Uh, do you have a preference for personal recording and personal gear? Do you use a kick drum mic? Do you use an instrument mic? Do you not mic at all and go in direct? Let me know down below. Remember to do all the likes and subscribes. I always forget to tell people to like, so like the video like that with the thumb, the thumb that goes this way. And only subscribe if you think that I earned it. If I earned your subscription, subscribe. If not, the next time subscribe. Bye.